What's happening, everybody? This is Adi back again with another deep dive. Gate 7 International here again. We're at the end of the deep dive season. Transfers are over. Only two deep dives left to go. This is one of them. Cedric Bakambu, exciting forward for Libyakos. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already at this point in the deep dive, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Bottom right corner, hit the bell if you want to be wrong for future deep dives. There is one more coming for the rest of the season, at least until the midway point. Then if there's more transfers coming in, you'll get more deep dives. So hit the like and subscribe button. Help us continue to grow this red-white family. For those of you who are betting people, Gate7INTL is the promo code. Visit betus.com.pa to get a 125% de deposit bonus when you start an account. We share our next-gen data analytics for players, for games, to try and help you pick out the best bets that you can make for the upcoming games. Gosta and I have both won uh, some of our bets this season, so bet along with us, and maybe we can help you guys make some money while supporting the team you love. Now back on it, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, this is it. We have it. Cedric Bakambu, the 31-year-old striker from DR Congo, Coming in six foot, 182 centimeters, 160 pounds, 73 kilos from Marseille. Now, he has played primarily as a forward. Uh, they did use him a little bit over on the right wing there. He's played in a multitude of formations. Uh, at Marseille, he played at a 4 3 3, a 4 5 1, 4 2 3 1. Uh, the profile is odd, but it's a strong profile. And I'll elaborate on that in a second. He loves a step over, incredibly agile, uh, or sorry, not incredibly agile is what I meant to say. He's got some speed to him, but change of direction isn't the fastest that we've seen. Uh, if he executes that step over properly, as I mentioned, he loves to do that. And he catches the defender on that half step, he's gone. He's in the clear. He's got solid speed, and that's usually all he needs. If not, the because of the change of, of pace that he has and his change of direction, it's not so good. Uh, he's going to end up relying more on his physicality to help beat some of those defenders. The touch seems a little bit awkward with him, but it's not like he loses the ball a lot. He tends to win more of these one-on-ones than, than, than not, I should say. So... You you might notice that his touches seems a little bit awkward here. Not as awkward as Bruma, but a little bit. But he keeps it close enough to where it works in his favor. Based on the sample size, he's he's a very efficient uh, player. And what I mean by that is he didn't play a lot at Marseille. Last season, he barely played uh, or didn't even play a 1,000 minutes. Uh, same with the season before that. But based on what we could see in those last two seasons, with the time that he was given, he was efficient with it. Uh, there's poacher's instinct, uh, an inclination to sit between defenders, something we're going to elaborate on uh, in a little bit. Uh, and uh, there's patience. He seems to have some patience with the ball, but doesn't seem to like to force things. Uh, again, maybe maybe not something that we can say right away because of the limited sample size, but at least with what we did see, uh, we can we can for sure say those things. Uh, now let's get started, as we always do, ladies and gentlemen, with a goal threat. So uh, here's some data behind me that I'll elaborate on shortly. In the film, like I said before, he is very efficient, very efficient with his opportunities. Very similar to what I said with Guizhou Huang when we did the deep dive on him. Almost half of the shots that he takes end up on target. That's pretty good. Uh, you know, a lot of these strikers that we've seen come through that I've done these deep dives on are usually in the 30 percentile, uh, sometimes even less, sometimes a little bit more. And anything that's not on frame, if it's not hitting the post, it's not usually uh, far from the target area. Goal opportunities came at, while he was at Marseille, primarily from set pieces. But when he was playing in China before going to Marseille, when he was at Villarreal, uh, he would score goals everywhere, literally. I mean, at anything he got in and around the goal mouth was a goal opportunity. A handful of poachers' goals. Um, the well, the goals that he got off of the set pieces in Marseille, a couple of them were poachers' goals. A lot of the ones in China were poachers' goals as well. Uh, very scrappy. Uh, when I say poachers' goals, I'm talking about scrappy goals. Uh, sometimes off set pieces, sometimes not. Uh, right place, right time kind of thing. Just 
getting into physical battles with the defenders to make sure he's the one that gets his foot on the ball, things like that. He moves around a fair bit, a fair bit in the final third, something we like to see, very, very mobile. In transition, he likes to occupy spaces in between defenders, especially if he's playing more central and not on the wing. Sometimes he'll he'll hang out a little bit wider, uh, maybe near closer to the fullback. And if he's given the ball with maybe a, just one man to beat, he's usually really good at getting around them. Uh, combining that speed with his physical nature, he and he also, like I said, he has a step over or two. So he was actually really good. I was surprised at how often he was beating his man, especially if it was the last defender. And the shots, more than all, more than not, uh, were were on frame. That's what I saw more or less in the the film. But let's have take a look at the data now. What I did here is. Uh, this summer, uh, I've done a lot of player comparisons for you. I try to pick players that I think are similar either in style or somebody that I think is important to compare to if we lost them. In this case, it's Tequino. I compared Weijo Wang also to Tequino, and I'm comparing Cedric Bakambu also to Tequino because these are strikers that we're bringing in to fill the void that he's leaving as a rotation striker, and we want to make sure that at the very least that these guys can do what Tequino did and hopefully more. So regarding the goal creation, we look at non-penalty goals, non-penalty XG. <laughs> Bakambu was underperforming his XG while Tequino was overperforming. My preference is the former. I would rather see a guy underperforming his XG because I know the opportunities are coming. Maybe some bad finishing, maybe some other circumstances here, but his production sustainable versus the other way Generally, that production isn't sustainable. It's not very often. Uh, Weijo Wang was an exception where you see strikers overperforming their XG. It does not usually happen. So this is more of sustainable performance for me that I see coming from Bakambu. And this is in a down, a down season for him. It's not one of the best seasons we've seen. So in a down season, he's got similar production to Tequino. Similarly to Tequino, not a lot of creation with assists. As we mentioned, it's uh, virtually non-existent. So he doesn't really do a lot of it, and neither did Tequino. So that's reflected here in the data. Uh, but when it comes to uh, XG plus XA here, so expected goal contribution, we'll say, it's higher than Tequino. So something, uh, again, in a down season for him. Regarding uh, shot creation or shot assist, Tequino edged him a little bit there. Tequino also had a lot more time to play was a little bit more consistent in that Bakambu uh, is much more likely to play across in and get out wide to Kino, as we know didn't really do that very often at all he preferred to uh, stay central and uh, continue to uh, just try and make things happen in the offensive end um, I told you guys uh, I told you guys uh, briefly that assist creation wasn't there for Bakambu um, especially against in Marseille. The last two seasons, virtually non-existent. Perhaps that's a reason why he wasn't used much at Marseille. Uh, he, his preference to be the final touch on the shot. Maybe maybe it, it was something, habits that were brought from China. Uh, some of the games I, I saw in China, uh, he was a little bit more involved, especially at Villarreal. So maybe there's something lost in transition there. Maybe something there with Marseille because it was something that he did before that. We just didn't see it that much there. Moving on, we have passing and build up uh, again. And this probably isn't surprising. A lot of these strikers we look at are not super involved in build up or they or they don't really influence build up and all outside of the occasional one two give and go uh, or a play into the final third. Not heavily involved unless it's a counter. Uh, so don't expect him to be involved in build-up, not like El Arabi at least, because he doesn't seem to do that. Um, the profile of Cedric Bakambu is an end product striker. And uh, despite the fact that there's the technical ability, he's got the strength and the speed to to take somebody on, maybe be a little bit more helpful. He's got adequate passing ability as well, uh, as you can see here in the data. The it's there, but it, it's not something, maybe it's instruction, not something he was heavily involved in. I will say this, though. Uh, the games I watched when he was at Villarreal, he was more active in build-up, uh, to, especially to the final third, not just in the final third. But the play style was different there. Maybe he was trusted more. Maybe he had more confidence. Um, maybe this is something that could be used and could be refound under Car uh, Carlos Corberan. Uh, it wasn't something I noticed very much at Marseille. 
the I brought up earlier sitting in spaces between the defenders. Something that caused a lot of confusion and he would make runs and would give him a lot of open space, led to a lot of dangerous situations, uh, not just in buildup, but in the final third against opposing teams. There's value in that mobility. And this is something that we've seen. It's a common theme, not just among forwards, uh, but amongst a lot of players that have come in since Gordabadan arrived. It's mobility. Mobility going forward, mobility off the ball. That seems to be the name of the game with these players that Gordabadan is attracting. Mobility, mobility, mobility. He seems to do that a lot, especially coming off the bench. And even in the full starts, he he likes to move and drift around a fair bit, especially in those middle space areas in between the defenders. So uh, something something just to be aware of. And looking a little bit closer at the data, again, in comparison to Tequino, touch count is very similar. Tequino edging him out. But again, Tequino was playing a lot more. He was playing a lot more in Greece where we were on the ball a lot more. So that's going to be reflected in the data as well. The Some of the more important things I want you to focus on here is going to be in the pass accuracy because Bakambu's pass accuracy was a little bit higher, uh, closer to 80%. We'd like to see that. And another area where he outshines Tequino, not just in his 1v1 dribbling ability, which is not much of a difference, but it is a difference, is the touches and penalty area. We have brought up, I had written, I had written some blogs with some data talking about how many touches Tequino was seeing. At one point uh, in the first third of the season, like our first nine or 10 games of the season, Tequino was our leader. Not just a leader for Libyakos, he was a leader in Greece for a number of touches in the penalty area. Well, take a look at Cedric Bakambu. Bakambu was averaging more touches in the penalty area than Tequino. Very important statistic there. Very important because this is something that right now we're missing. We need a finisher. We need somebody that's not just going to to make the moves around, get shots, but that's going to be involved. Get in the get volume in that penalty area. Um, something that Tequino did at least quite well, and this is something that Bakambu seems to do in spades as well. This is something he also did very well at Villarreal and in China. So at the very least, I'm hoping he can bring this over to Olympiacos because this is something that we need, especially as we're starved of the finishing touch in the final third. Uh, next up, we have the defensive profile. Uh, regarding the defensive attributes, guys, I always bring up, especially when it comes to these forwards or some of these more offensive players, these defensive attributes are not super important. Uh, we only, what we care about with these forwards, uh, yeah, it's nice if they win balls, but we care that they press in unison with the team. And we also care that they track back. So don't be, it's not any surprise that a lot of Bakambu's defensive statistics are lacking They're at Marseille. It was kind of difficult for me to determine if he does track back. Cause obviously if he's coming off the bench. He's got energy. You're going to expect that. Uh, so uh, obviously he's tracking back off the bench, but when I saw him making these starts at best, I could say he was relatively inconsistent when it came to tracking back. So it's hard for me to come out here and tell you, Oh, this is a guy that's going to make the runs. He's going to press. Well, he's going to track back uh, pressing. I did see, but the tracking back was inconsistent. So I can't tell you with, if he's a day in doubt, day in day out starter that he's going to do that adequately, or if it's something we're going to get frustrated with. Tequino, and you can see that in some of the data here. Tequino, uh, Tequino's data in defensive data was better, and he pressed very well. He was hungry for the ball all the time. Uh, Tequino was also very good in the air. Bakambu is not good in the air. Similarly, Weijo Wang wasn't very good in the air when we did the deep dive on him as well. So it's just interesting. Uh, the strikers that we're bringing in, just none of them seem to be as good in the air. Tequino was. Uh, he was an animal winning balls everywhere. Uh, it didn't always amount to goals, but he was an animal winning goal, uh, winning balls. Just something to bear in mind going forward. <laughs> Again, as we mentioned, the defensive attributes are not exactly something that we are really, really, really concerned with when we're measuring the ability of these strikers. So now we've had a look at the data. We've I've discussed with you what I saw in the film. I've discussed with you kind of how uh, a little bit what some of this stuff means to me. So what's my verdict here? What do I think about this? Well, look, guys, we brought them in on a free. Free transfer, uh, the nature of its low risk. Uh, obviously, we have a, four forwards now. 
on the list. Couldn't get rid of, of um, Abu Bakr Kamara, Kamara, AK-47. Waste A little bit of a waste of money there. We've got Weijo Wong, who, as efficient as he was at a terrible club like Bordeaux, hasn't really been bringing us the goals. I expected that there would be a little transition time with him. He seems like he's half a step off. And he's missed a few things. It's He hasn't really integrated as well as we would have liked or as quickly as we could have hoped. Uh, again, something that maybe we expected. El Adabi scored a couple goals. The, some of the class is still there, but I still think he's on the downhill. So then the question becomes, sure, low risk signing, free transfer. Can this guy do what we need? Is this the striker that's going to come in and get the goals moving. For those of you that saw the pre-match stats ahead of the game against Aris, you guys saw that Olympiacos is underperforming, vastly underperforming its XG. We're not finishing the opportunities being given. Is this the guy that's going to do it? Well, he's efficient, similar to Weijo Huang. Weijo Huang was efficient, hasn't really meshed as well as we would have liked with the club. I'll I'll say this, though. Maybe maybe we can be a little bit timid in whether or not we think Bakabu has what it takes to quickly be what we need him to be. But he's got a resume. He's got a great resume. A resume that we haven't seen at this club in a very long time. You can even argue that Yusuf El Arabi didn't have this resume. The guy scored nine goals in Europa League. It was the last striker that came to Olympiacos with that resume. What he did at Villarreal, incredible. <laughs> even at China, even in China, he did well in China, for what that's worth. At two seasons, though, at Marseille, he couldn't really replicate what he did at Villarreal or what he did in China. So then the question is, can go to bed on, find a way to resurrect the form that this guy had? in Villarreal or in China? Or are we going to see more struggles like he had while he was at Marseille? I'm inclined to believe that the probability that this guy will hit and do something for us quickly is higher than it was with Weijo Wong. With Weijo Wong, I told you guys, I mean, the data wasn't amazing for him. His finishing, the, the efficiency with finishing was really all that was. And, and we ignored a lot of the bad stuff because we said it was a terrible team. Unfortunately, like I said, he hasn't meshed very well. This guy, data's pretty good for a lot of things. Am I super impressed with what I see at Marseille? No. But um, I have hope because of the resume that he has. He is a talented player. I explained a lot of this already. He's 31 years old. Awkward touch probably won't go anywhere, but it works more often than not. And if he has an awkward touch, like Bruma, but we get end product out of him, fine by me. He's being paid to score goals. Doesn't have to look pretty while doing it. Once again, I think that probability is higher that this guy will pan out for us quicker, at least than we Joe Wong. And at the very least, he's more competition for Yusuf El Arabi. I don't think AK-47 has a place on this club anymore. I think it's between these three guys. And although Bakambu isn't good in the air like Weijo Wang, maybe he's not a similar build-up profile to Yusef al Arabi. He's still something different from Weijo Wang. He's faster, better dribbler, stronger. Different profile. Many, based on the resume, you could even say just better. He's just a better player than Weijo Wong. I think that's an argument you can make. So what's my verdict? This is a good signing. And it's a signing we need. Let's be honest, guys. We're not doing well in the finishing department. And this guy is a proven finisher. Proven. At many clubs. Bad season or two at Marseille, yeah. But he's got a resume. So <laughs> I, I'm not expecting instant impact. I'm not expecting impact in our next game, for example. But with the international break coming up, I think I think this guy 
of all the pieces that we have, including Yusef El Arabi, is of the highest likelihood to do something for us this season. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the deep dive. There's my verdict with with Cedric Bakambu. Uh, I think he's going to be a he has what it takes to be a great player, at least a 10, 15 goal striker uh, for the rest of the season in Greece. And I sincerely hope that he does. If you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. There is one more deep dive to close out the summer season. Uh, I'm hoping I will get that done at the time of recording. This is the night before the game against Aris Thessaloniki. So I'm hoping that I'll have the Samaseku deep dive done tomorrow as well. And then that'll finish up deep dive season, boys and girls. So thank you again, guys, for listening, especially if you've made it this far. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. Got a lot more good stuff coming up for you guys. More deep dives, probably more stuff coming with the World Cup as well. International Blake, also Greek national team coming up. So be sure to follow us then. And until next time, we'll see. Go,